Thank you so much. Um, so just for people who don't know, um, Steve Lom is, uh, invented Matroska, um, works mm -hmm. with Videolan, and so it's, you, it's really great to have him here. So, Steve Lom. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, so as you said, I don't know where you um, I invented Matroska, but actually it's more complicated than that. It was just not just me. I started from another project who someone started. Then we tried to gather a lot of information from a lot of people. And then Matroska was created. I pushed it. I created the fork that I talked about last year. Uh, so yeah, I usually take the credit from the crowd because I'm the one presenting, but I try not to forget that it's not just me. Okay, well, no worry. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about the state of the specifications. Uh, we've done a lot of things in uh, one year and a half or two, and there's still a lot to do. Uh, so before starting, maybe it's a good idea to see where we're coming from. Um, so basically, uh, Matroska was an open project, so it's not just open source, but it's really an something that was created in the open, so basically on IRC mainly list. Doom9, which is a website, a forum where people discuss technical stuff. I, I don't know if it still exists. Um, so basically, uh, what we did was uh, start from MCF, which, which was the project I joined, and then from technical uh, uh, divergence, I created my own fork with stuff that had worked and developed and that the original creator disagrees with. So that's how Matroska uh, was created. Uh, but basically all that talk, everything was done in the open. <coughs> so basically if you look at pretty much all the other standards that exist in the wild, it's never like that. It's companies working on stuff, uh, having meetings, uh, it takes a lot of time, and then they decide on their own what they need and do something. For us, I think it was kind of new way of doing things. Uh, it was everything online. We never met each other. So some of them I never met. I met a lot of them now. But uh, for years we were just talking. Even after Matroska was created, we still never met. Um, so that's where that's the importance of being open. Is that. Uh, and also, that's why Matroska is good and why people are, are here and they use Matroska. It's because we try to be as open as, uh, and um, welcome everything that people would say and any idea. Um, so the, uh, we try to get inspired from how the World, 3, World Wide Web, uh, I think, conference, consortium, the World WC3C, uh, does things. It's also kind of open. Uh, anybody can join in. It's free. Um, and all they do uh, has to be royalty free in the end, which is very important for us. Uh, the goal was Matroska was uh, long term storage. So that's also why you're here. My original uh, uh, need was to store files that didn't work with the stuff that was at the time. Uh, the other thing was low overhead because of the design that we had. Uh, it was going to be very big files and at the time in 2002 and even before it was not an option for us so we designed the thing to be very small uh, and also to be transmitted over network which is something that led Google uh, to use Matroska for the basis of uh, WebM. So basically now if you go on YouTube you, with Chrome or Mozilla or Firefox, you may not know, but you're actually using Matroska from their WebM. Uh, so that was an important step for us. Uh, so when we started, uh, so the basically we designed the format for 
maybe a year or two, trying to get everything inside and make everything fit more or less correctly. Uh, but people kept asking us, uh, how how do you uh, you kept on you keep on talk, talking about your format, but we never see it because we ne didn't code anything. We just actually created the spec that was our main goal during the spec. Uh, so people were not very interested anymore because we talked about it too much and nothing came out, um, I mean, usable. So we did some code, uh, the library, uh, MKV merge, and things like that, that most of you probably still use now. Uh, and people started using it and to use uh, pirated copies of TV shows, of movies, uh, in all kinds of formats. And uh, basically, in the, in the illegal uh, stuff, uh, the communities, they have s actually communities of people doing that. And they have uh, specifications that say what format you have to use, what codec you have to use, etc. At some point, they switched to MP4, but they realized it wasn't good enough for what they wanted, so they, they always come back to Matroska, so we're happy about that. Um, of course, WebM uh, is uh, used a lot. Uh, there's actually something coming at the end of the year, next year, called AV1, which is a codec that a lot of major companies are supporting, basically all of them except Apple. Um, that means software companies, hardware companies, everyone's behind. That's supposed to actually end the format, uh, the codec war. Uh, so we hope it's going to be using WebM and Matroska, and then pretty much everything will be using that. And of course, there's FFV1 and FLAC, which is kind of new for us, especially FFV1. Uh, but uh, of course, you're uh, most of you probably use that now, or I hope so. Uh, uh, another milestone what that was important for Matroska is that actually, when because of the pirate stuff that a lot of people were using and downloading, they kept asking the hardware people, we want to play these files rather than on PC plugged on our TV. So now it's you can play Matroska files from any Blu-ray players any TVs in Windows 10 out of, out of the box. So that was, uh, I mean, and they never came to us to ask for anything apart from Microsoft to ask to use the name. Otherwise, everybody does their own thing. Do, and because it's open and free, um, but there's no problem and most of it works all the time. Uh, so why does uh, standardization matter? Uh, because the idea and because that's where we started, we wanted to have something that everybody could use, everybody could actually uh, und understand. That's why the format, the specification, which was just one web page with the basic uh, format layout and then all the elements. That anybody could read easily, quickly and understand. Uh, but of course, it's uh, not how most standards are. You have to be very precise in the words you use. So that's why we need something different now that we're working on. Um, we need also more people uh, from different horizons, not just people inv involved in open stuff like we did before, but more professional people. Uh, get rid of that legacy because at the time, I and the other people who worked on the format didn't have any knowledge of what we were doing. Uh, so we did some weird stuff sometimes and we're trying to get rid of that. Uh, and also because uh, it's good for, I put WebM, but basically Google, they also ask for uh, the specifications. It's important for them to have something to convince <laughs> other people to use. And uh, so that's the credibility thing. Uh, so the seller group was creating at the IETF. So IETF is the, um, the standardization body that rules everything that's used on the internet. So basically TCP, IP, whatever you're using, it's, it was designed through the IETF. Uh, so it's very nice for us to be working there. Uh, 
especially since we have the same goal of doing everything open, in the open and free, royalty free, and uh, anybody can use the stuff after. Uh, so right now we have a uh, EBM for on my side. There's EBML Matroska documentations. EBML is the lower form, lower layer format of Matroska, but it's like the XML, and Matroska would be a format using the XML. So that's two different specifications, and now Matroska has been split actually in three parts because it's too big uh, to do at once. Uh, also, it makes more sense to do it that way. For now, there's 13 contributors on each project, uh, and it's still growing. There's 300 comments for each of these projects, so EBM and Matroska. Uh, uh, a lot of cleaning, maybe sometimes even changing a word, but also rewriting whole uh, paragraph, uh, removing stuff that doesn't make sense. Uh, so it was starting in 2015 with uh, some funding for the European Union. And the Seller Group also deals with uh, FFV1 standardiz standardization and uh, flex standardization. Uh, so uh, all that, mostly the goal here is for archiving. Um, so our goals uh, for now are to finish EBML. It's all, I think it's almost ready. Matroska uh, version 1 to 4. Uh, basically, there's still a lot of work. The splitting of the three parts will help, but uh, I mean, there's the basic Matroska things that hopefully can go faster and the other ones which are the codex and I don't remember the other one can take more time and it's probably less important especially at least for now we need uh, FFV1 and flag mappings that to, do be, to be done correctly and uh, also uh, the goal of the, um, the whole project is to keep going and adding new stuff removing stuff, but uh, we still add stuff or have new ideas of things we could do. Dave also, I don't know where he is, but also did some conformance test files, which are very useful to test the implementation and also just doing them, you can think of how the wording of the specification can be done. Uh, things that we added recently was 360 video and HDR. Um, that was mostly done outside of Cellar. Uh, the HDR thing was mostly done from Google and the 360 from an other open group that worked on 360 video. Uh, I think it's Google, Facebook, and some other people. And they did the stuff for Matroska and MP4, and we just took their work. So it's always nice. Um, future additions, so uh, like I said, we still have a lot of ideas. Uh, I'm not going to list them because I think I don't have much time. Uh, but uh, all that is ideas that we want to do quickly or maybe have more time. Uh, <coughs> there's also uh, the idea of having a, a actual frame rate because right now each frame is a actually time in nanoseconds, but a lot of people don't like that, so we're still looking for ways to make it in more uh, usual way that's done in the, open, uh, the AV world. Uh, even though uh, right now we haven't found a backward compatible way to do it, so we'll see what can, what can be done. And how to participate, actually, I already talked about uh, the, I mean, the GitHub and that you shouldn't be frightened to participate. Uh, it's always good to have even people reading the things and say, uh, oh, I don't understand that part, or oh, I saw that mistake. It's actually easy to contact us and make changes or suggest changes. Uh, and like Ashley did, everything is in Markdown, so it's easy to read, and then it's generated into the weird-looking pages that Ashley showed you. Um, and that's it, so thank you.
please contribute. Uh, I hope you have questions. And I brought some stickers with me <laughs> that you can all put on your laptop. Also, I forgot to mention uh, my day job is working on VLC. So also, if you have questions, uh, you can ask me. OK, thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes. First question, Carl. Carl. Thank you, Steve, for your important work. Um, could you say something about MT Validate? I mean, what would be the ideal situation and what it is now? Thank you. So, MK Validate and MK Clean, MK Validator actually, uh, were two tools I created when actually we worked with Google on releasing WebM. So, it was like a few months before WebM was released. Uh, that we realized that uh, it was going to be bigger than anything we anticipated and we actually had to uh, make the things more professional and make sure also Mozilla was pushing not to support anything that's outside of the spec uh, and they're still pushing for that. They don't, if you don't support, a, if you add something that's out of WebM, they won't play it. So the idea was to have something to verify that the files are actually uh, correct WebM and obviously correct Matroska. And that's also, so that's how MK Validator came to be. Uh, MK Clean was the actually counterpart. Is if you have a file that's not validated, you can actually pass it through MK Clean and then it's probably valid. Well, it is valid, but it's probably remove the invalid parts if possible. Uh, so there's still work to be done, especially on MK Clean, uh, an MK validator. Uh, also, I didn't mention, but the specs. There's an XML file that's used to generate all the elements. This XML file is also used to generate the code that's parsing the Matroska files. So it's the code is actually exactly matching the specs. Whenever we add things or remove stuff from the specs or update the specs. We generate the code in which is used in MKClean and MKVLidata, so it's always exactly matching. Uh, question: um, When archives consider adopting MKV and they're thinking of implementing it in their the software in their work chains, an important requirement for them is like: Is the specification finished? Like, will it change? Because we don't adopt it before, we are sure that everything changed and. When I see your wish list on what you want to work on, I see a lot of things which are important for archives. What's the current state and do you already guarantee or ensure a certain level of backward compatibility for the moment? Uh, well, when will it be done? I have no idea. In the IETF, there are actually milestones that you have to reach. Uh, you always push them forward because you're never on time. Uh, so. We do our best, uh, I mean, for me uh, and most of us work on actually the specs. It's not our day job, so we would do that on the side. Uh, so it takes time. But like I said, if you look at what support we already have, especially in hardware things and everything, even though the spec, uh, and it was the, for a long time and still now the website, the matroska.org, it says this is not the official spec. Uh, because there was always a plan to have something cleaner. Now we're doing the cleaner thing, but it's actually very usable. It's not in a state where everything is going to change because it's not final, everything can happen. Uh, it's not like that, it's just rewording things and making things cleaner. So, but yeah, it takes time. You cannot say it's final, but uh, to people who ask you about that, you can say, tell them, yeah, but it's already been out for 15 years. The format hasn't actually changed for that time. The stuff we removed is stuff that we're sure is never used. Um, we haven't added anything important like 360 and HDR. It's just addition. If you don't have them, the thing still work. So even though it's not a final spec, it's actually very, very stable already. Christoph Kubo from NOAA. Hello, Steve. Um, actually, when I raised my hand to ask for the microphone, I would have had exactly the same question when it is ready. Okay. 
Um, and I just because this was already answered, I just wanted to add a comment. Um, um, I think there is many, many implementations already in archives going with MKV and FFV1. And uh, we have done also many installations on that part uh, as well. Um, actually, we have done it on ABI, um, tell you like that. But the, 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 the nice thing about that one is uh, simply because it's open source, um, we can handle it. That's the part what I wanted to contribute here. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ashley? Just super brief, I, I want to pay it forward by shouting out Moritz Bunkers, who's not here, but has done so much incredible work on standardizing Madraska along with Steve. So. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Martin Belo, my name. My name, you know me from GitHub, maybe? Yes. Yes, and my question is, uh, could you uh, think about the uh, menu, Matroska menu structure a little bit, and uh, okay. I hope you don't remove it. <laughs> The uh, well, the Matroska menu is interesting. That's actually where how I got started working on VLC because I had this idea of mapping the DVD menus in Matroska, mm -hmm. and I, I did the specifications and most of what's well, it's not actually finished with uh, the specifications I could find because the DVD specs are not open. You can buy them, but I'm not going to do that. So with whatever I found, I did something and some tools. Uh, so that's how I did worked on VLC to prove that what I created was actually usable. So I even now, uh, VLC can play the test files that I did. Uh, but the, the thing is using extra features that were added to Matroska for that purpose. The features are not going to be removed, mm -hmm. but I think it's better to leave them out of the main specification and add something just for that uh, okay. on the side because it's even more work, and especially if we're going to define uh, DVD uh, compatible menus, that would mean we actually um, tell that part is coming from that part of the DVD menu, and even at VLC where we act actually have DVD support, we still don't have the specifications. So, <laughs> and so it's a tricky thing, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. something. Uh, a second question. Um, can, we, can we implement uh, our own Matroska menu? I, I, I know we have yes. the Matroska native menu, but yes. there are so the ma the only one. The menu is done through what's called um, uh, codec chapters. Yes. So it's basically you add your own code around chapters, so you can seek two chapters, or if uh, elements of the video are clicked, you can actually, so that's part of the specifications. The DVD thing is actually one codec for DVD, but your own um, menu system could use your own codec, and it would still be the same Matroska. Because it's, uh, the codec is actually something that's interpreted outside of Matroska, yeah. so then it's your code, you do what you want. Well, um, thanks very much, Steve.